Hey guys, my name is Miska and welcome to Overwatch Central. Today's video is a little bit different as you can see. I'm trying out something new. This is kind of a concept that's come of me wanting to make sort of map guides again in a way and creating something for the actual Overwatch ranked player, not the top 500 player, not the Grandmaster player, not the Overwatch League Pro or just talking about what the meta is over there, but rather, you know, 70% or 80% or whatever it is of all the ranked games that are played in, you know, bronze, silver, but definitely gold, plat, and maybe even to some degree diamond actually, and talking about what to do in those games, what team composition to have, and how to approach each map in the sort of default way, just so you have something to kind of refer to. And yeah, I hope this is useful for you guys, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, let's get to the first map of this potential series if you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below, and leave a like if it's actually entertaining, because honestly, this could be terrible, and just dislike the video if it is. All right, welcome to Paris. So we're gonna first be covering the team composition, the core team compositions for the defending team. And then after that, I'll try and cover what the attackers will do and how you'll have to react to that as the defending team. And when I cover the defending team as well, I'll be covering where to stand and kind of roughly what to do and why you pick each character, because that's really important to know. This high ground is obviously the key to Paris. I think a lot of people will stand here, but I think a lot of the time they won't really know what to do or why they're kind of standing there. I've seen a lot of people kind of just pick an abundance of characters that don't really make use of this spot. And especially when playing support recently, I've seen some very odd tank picks and I wanted to kind of cover that because it seems like a lot of people know that this spot is really useful, but maybe not exactly like how to utilize it. And honestly, it's pretty simple. So let's get started. First off, tanks. Orisa Sigma, really good characters here. So Orisa and Sigma can hold this high ground very well, right? They can cover here and they can cover over here and they are also very good at repositioning between these two main spots. They obviously cover kind of like this area in a cone, which is where the attackers will be coming from. All right, cool, pretty simple. Orisa and Sigma as well are good at this range. It's right in the sort of medium range sweet spot where Sigma is still useful and Orisa doesn't have to compensate that much with her gun. And it means that they can actually do a pretty good chunk of damage without any real issues. So that's why those characters are really good here. Now, speaking of range, I want to talk about Reinhardt. Do not pick Reinhardt on defense on this first point. Like, most of the time at least. Unless you're doing some really fun meme -y composition, whatever, have fun, do your thing. But Reinhardt is just generally kind of useless on this point. Like, obviously he has no range at all due to the melee weapon. So standing here or standing here, you're just going to be holding your shield up and losing your shield over time. It's not useful. Like, pick Orisa or Sigma instead. They are both much better here. They're really, really good characters. I'm sure you could be brawling on the point with Reinhardt later on, but generally, don't pick Reinhardt. Now, let's talk Roadhog with Orisa, of course. So, Orisa and Roadhog were played quite a bit before. It's because of the pull and hook combo, right? You can pull above a shield or something like that and get a hook with a Roadhog, and it's a nice pick to start a, fi a fight 6v5. And that's great. That's good and all, and especially in the shield meta, you can still pull it off, but it's gonna be a lot harder. So, Sigma and Orisa will block a lot of your hooks. So, first off, Orisa. If you're an Orisa player, you're standing here, don't just start pulling and wasting that halt in the middle and then the attacking team just run around and do whatever they want. Like, you want to be looking for those opportunities in places where they don't expect it and don't just, you know, throw it out randomly. So, with your Roadhog, for example, one thing that you guys can look for as Orisa Hog is this spot right here. So, this ice cream truck is often used by supports on attack and just generally by squishies or characters that are kind of small on attack that want to hide behind something because there's not a whole lot of cover around. That means that when you are here as an Orisa, you can throw out a pull over this, pull them up in the air, and all of a sudden your Roadhog has a really good opening. Now, that is one part of it. The other part of it is obviously the Roadhog's uh, part of that whole combo. And you can't just be expecting that hook to come out every single time as a Risa. As a Risa, you could be telling your Roadhog this before the match start if you want to go for that. As the Roadhog, you have to be looking out for this stuff. If you're just, you know, turned around 180 and you're fighting, I don't know, some Hammond on the bridge here or someone, a Sombra that's like running around on the objective or something, you're not going to be able to 180 snap around and to just see where that halt is and get the hook off and kill that character. There's no way, it's just not gonna happen, especially in ranks where people might not be super, you know, agile and super quick on those roadhog hooks and things like that. So definitely be the sort of proactive partner there as roadhog and be the one that's looking out for when the Orisa finds those openings, right? You have to be that. And additionally, if you see an opening as roadhog, then 
just call. Hey, Orisa, can you uh, can you pull left of their shield, or can you pull above, or can you pull around like that sign or something along those lines? Especially if the attacking team have like repositioned, say they're like over here or over here, and you're still on this high ground. Like asking the Orisa to pull up here or to the to the left like this on the floor. Just ask for it. Like it's that sort of thing where you, as the Rolog, have to be doing that stuff. Too. You can't just leave it all to your Orisa. So yes, play Hog if you're comfortable on him and if you're willing to put in this extra bit of effort because it can definitely work and it will work in most ranks and most games if you do it well. Moving on from tanks, let's talk uh, supports. Personally, I really like Baptiste on this map. Baptiste can make use of this middle thing in a few different ways. So obviously it's cover, right? It's kind of useful to have. But on top of that, you can actually throw your immortality immortality field you know on the sort of back of this right here you know roughly in this sort of spot and it means that you still cover like quite a bit of this area with the immortality field whilst it's still being very difficult to shoot for the attackers it means that they would have to push around kind of like this or they would have to push up like this and it's just yeah makes things a little bit trickier for them so that's really useful additionally baptiste has his hit scan gun which can be useful if there's a fara like up here or anything along those lines just to help out a little bit it's pretty good for the range and just generally a very fun character to play i really like it it means also if you're standing like over here you don't have to run around all the way to the stairs you know you can jump back up on the high ground and because the high ground is so essential then yeah, Baptiste is just a pretty pretty good pick on this map. Pairing Baptiste with another support, I just think you have to kind of go with another big healer, honestly. Like, you have to go with, like, Moira, Mercy. They're kind of the best characters to pick with him, in my opinion. Ana can definitely work, too. But, yeah, Moira is super strong right now. I would definitely go for Moira. So you're looking at Moira, Baptiste, Mar uh, Orisa, and Sigma. And those are just, yeah, four really solid characters. From there, let's talk uh, DPS. I mentioned the Farah earlier, coming over this roof. It definitely does happen. Um, there's a bit of a lower roof there, a bit more to the left, but yeah, either way. That spot is only really covered by Hitscan, right? And Baptiste is good and all, but someone like McCree is even better. And I, McCree is a character I really like seeing played on this map, because you have a lot of things you can do. So let's say you're around here as McCree, right? So, you can cover this whole area with your sort of close quarter, fan the hammer, flashbang style gameplay. Okay, cool. Pretty si simple, like pretty straightforward. You can also cover the Farah coming over the roof and you can help uh, your Baptiste, you and your Baptiste make for a pretty uh, strong hit scan sort of combo and you can deal a lot of damage to her and the Mercy that might be with her. And on top of that, Hammonds really like sort of swinging over that and then coming around attacking Hammonds, this is, and then trying to knock the enemy team, uh, the defending team, off this whole platform out here, right? And that is the part where McCree is not just useful because, you know, oh, hit scan, oh, flashbang and all that, but you kind of cover a bunch of the different strategies on this map. You cover the far over the roof, you cover the whole run around the right, you can even help out on the left, obviously, but the Hammond around the back is someone that only really CC can stop properly. And yeah, McCree is obviously really good there. So yeah, McCree, super good. And this is why another reason uh, as to why the Roadhog might actually be really worth picking up as well, because you can turn around and hook this Hammond before he knocks your entire team off the platform. All right, um, yeah, that's about five or so heroes that I think are pretty useful. In terms of the last DPS, honestly, just pick whatever seems, seems appropriate. Bastion Strat is definitely viable on this map. If you want to play a Bastion, play a Mercy, play a Baptiste, play a, a Sigma and a Risa, and just figure that stuff out. But yeah, honestly, that's pretty much it for the characters that you would want on defense. Okay, moving on from that, let's talk about what the attackers will do. So the attackers will either come here through the left, right? This is probably the most common path. Head up either here just for, you know, some quick high ground and being able to actually sort of contest you there. Or they will run past the little ice cream truck or whatever it is. Maybe, probably at least hug this wall because, you know, you can't see them as well if you're standing over here uh, as defenders. And just head straight to the point. Now, generally, every single left side sort of strat for the attackers will uh, mean one thing for the defenders. And that's you're standing here, you need to spot that early, you need to call it, you need to start repositioning a bit more and more. Sigma is very good at that. And start sending people back here to rotate back. Like, if you don't take this spot and keep the high ground, then it's going to be very difficult to contest properly. The reason as to why also having this high ground and that spot is good is because if they set up here, they're not going to have a whole lot of ground to work with, right? But you are going to have this whole shield that meets them, and you're going to have this side too, which kind of creates different angles. And once they have passed here as well, like the uh, the attackers, you can even go as far as, you know, like sending some people, uh, you know, someone over here 
and at that point you know you're just like dominating this map like the they just kind of run into a trap there so it's all about like calling that early send someone to like actually rotate and from there you just have to kind of yeah, deal with whatever characters that they tend to have but do not give up this high ground this high ground is super useful you need to keep this high ground at almost all times so yeah when that rotation happens don't just abandon that and sit everyone over here bunkering up over there never works out so yeah all right editing this i kind of realized i need to add some things for attack so i'm going to be adding in some tips here that are kind of things and heroes that you can build around for attack there's no one composition and attack that will just break every defense on paris obviously so here we go so first off i want to cover the left side here the left side involves going up here, and it can also involve going around and all the way to the point, that sort of thing. Alright, so, in my opinion, one of the best things you can do, and that I really like to do that seems to be pretty consistent in most ranks, is that you head through the cafe with a Symmetra, and just sort of Orisa Sigma, or something along those lines, something that can kind of, you know, stand their ground, and then you throw out the teleporter this route right here. So Symmetra stands here, teleports the entire team to over here, and then you set up on the objective. That is a really solid attacking strategy, and it's pretty easy to pull off. It only really requires a Symmetra that knows where to go, and the rest should kind of, you know, just work out. And it's not too hard to do either, so yeah. Another thing you can do though is pick Hammond if you're, you know, playing solo and you don't really have a team that can pick a Symmetra or maybe people aren't really talking as much, whatever. Is that you just throw yourself in here very close to the wall so you don't really get killed. You should be going fast enough to like speed all the way over here. You can sit behind this thing for a little bit as cover. So the attackers up here will obviously like turn around like this way. But the thing about this is that when they are looking that way, uh, the, your team can sort of start walking in a little bit. Then you get the old swoop in uh, over here and you knock some people off the high ground. Now that's pretty useful if you don't really have a team that can communicate around things or they're just not really talking, whatever, it happens, it happens to everyone. So yeah, that's just another one of those uh, strategies that I think is definitely worth pulling off. Just keep in mind, stay close to the wall here and other than that, you should be pretty good to go. And uh, finally, which I think is probably the most reliable way to go about this, is to pick Sombra and just try to charge up your EMP. Uh, you can do this together with a Hammond even if you want to go around. But this requires quite a bit of patience and you have to also be at least decent at Sombra. Like, it's not difficult to do, but you have to at least be somewhat confident. So obviously, you know, run around invisible to over here and then just harass the enemy team. Maybe uh, take the health pack like in here. I think there's a... There's a it's a mega there if I'm not mistaken and then you just uh, chill around here as Sombra you harass the enemy team until you have your EMP and then the EMP is a pretty surefire way to break this high ground defense over here so you can just either walk in here throw in the translocator and then mid-air like here you just pop the EMP and then your team comes in either this way and pushes up at the same time or just you know around like up the stairs like whatever it, it doesn't really matter the point is you need to get the EMP off and communicate when you do that so your team knows that that's happening if you don't communicate when you play sombra throwing out an emp you might as well just not be playing the character because it is very difficult to get anything done if you don't talk all right that's basically just some simple tips for attacking all right that's everything for this video thank you very much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this i really don't know if this is like turned out well or not because i don't really have like a reference point to something else we've done in this way uh but yeah if you want more then i'll do more maybe something like horizon lunar colony or whatever map you want put it in the comments if you want another map then put that in the comments below and i'll do that for next time and uh, if there's any improvements i can make please just either uh dm me that on twitter that's fine or you can just put that in the comments too but if you really have you know something in particular that you want to get to then just tweet at my account my own account at miska underscore on twitter uh, or dm me there and i'll see that for sure okay thanks again for watching really appreciate it and uh, i'll see you guys next time bye bye